Okay, in this video we want to look at the following question. Given natural numbers a, b, and c, when does there exist integers x and y such that ax plus by equals c? So this is known as a linear Diophantine equation and we're trying to solve a linear Diophantine equation. <clears throat> so let's recall the following. If C equals the GCD of A and B, then there does exist so there exists X and Y integers such that AX plus BY equals GCD of A and B. And so finding such x and y um, uses something called the extended Euclidean algorithm, um, which I have a few videos on. So and in fact, there are infinitely, infinitely many solutions for this x and y, and I give an example of that as well. So uh, what we'll focus on for the rest of this video is, are there any other values of c that allow us to solve this equation, and what are they? So I'll clean up the chalkboard, and then we'll get into that question. Okay, good. So now we'll get on to answering the question is, when can we find a solution to ax plus by equals equals c where a, b, and c are more arbitrary natural numbers. <clears throat> so let's suppose that x and y are in z such that this equation exists. Good. And then the next thing we want to do, let's say let's let d equal the gcd of a and b. So as we talked about before, we do have a solution if c is equal to d, but we want to consider a more general case here, maybe c is not equal to d. So we'll let d be the GCD of a and b, and so notice that tells us the following. That tells us that d divides a and d divides b. So it's the greatest common divisor, but it's also a common divisor. Good. So now that tells us that D divides any multiple of A and D divides any multiple of B and thus it m divides any combination of A and B like this so that we have D divides AX plus BY but that means that D divides the left hand side of this equation but that tells us that D must also divide the right hand side of the equation. So that leads us to the following fact, which is <clears throat> given A, B, and C natural numbers, the equation AX plus BY equals C has a solution for um, x and y in integers um, if and then I'm going to put if and only if here although we haven't proven this super carefully but we've given a lot of evidence to suggest this if and only if the GCD of A and B divides C in other words C is a multiple of the GCD of A and B. Okay, good. So now that we've established this fact, let's look at some examples. Okay, so let's look at some examples of linear Diophantine equations with solutions and without solutions. So let's first look at 3x plus 6y equals 2. So recall this has a solution if and only if 
two is a multiple of the GCD of three and six, but it's not, so there is no solution. So no solution with X and Y in integers. Good. So now let's look at maybe seven uh, X plus 21 Y equals five. So again, since the GCD of 7 and 21 is 7, and 5 is not a multiple of 7, there's also no solution with x and y integers. So let's look at one more example. So maybe 10x plus 12y equals 4. So notice the GCD of 10 and 12 equals 2, and 4 is a multiple of 2, so we're guaranteed to have a solution. And 4 equals 2 times 2, in other words, it's a multiple of 2, so we have a solution. So there is a solution. So let's go ahead and find the solution. So now obviously we could do something like the extended Euclidean algorithm, but since these numbers are pretty small, we can uh, guess a solution and check it. So maybe let's first solve 10x plus 12y equals the GCD. And then notice, if we solve this equation, then we can multiply it by 2, and we've solved this equation. So this is pretty easy. We can let x equal negative 1 and y equal 1. Good. And that will give us a solution to this equation. So we'll have 10 times negative 1 plus 12 times 1 equals 2. Good. Now what we can do is multiply this entire equation by 2, and then that's going to give us 10 times negative 2 plus 12 times 2 equals 4. And so we've solved the equation that we wanted to originally. So now next, let's see how we can get infinitely many solutions. So we'll notice that 10 and 12 have a least common multiple of 60, and then we'll write 60 minus 60 equals 0, and then we'll factor 60 two ways. So let's factor 60 as 10 times 6 plus 12 times negative 5 equals 0. And so, since this equation is true, then we can also multiply it by k. So 0 times k is 0, so we can multiply this by k. So we have 10 times 6k plus 12 times negative 5k equals 0. And now what we can do is we can take this equation and add it to our equation over here. So we have 10 times 6k plus 12 times negative 5k equals zero, and that's going to give us an equation that represents a family of all solutions to our original equation. So here we have 10 times 6k minus 2 plus 12 times negative 5k plus 2 equals 4. And now we have infinitely many solutions to our given equation. So we have x is 6k minus 2, y is negative 5k plus 2, and k is any integer.